This, this is fucking hilarious. So again, talk about cancer culture, right? This clip is courtesy of um, Two Bears One Cave, episode number two hundred. Congratulations to them for reaching two hundred episodes. And they talk about cancer culture, right? Because Bert's obsessed with cancer culture. He's obsessed with it, even though he's probably he knows deep down he's kind of racy anyway. He says what he wants and he's kind of made his own fortune but he knows deep down he's not ever going to be like a mainstream guy because there's too much stuff out there about him laughing at certain things and doing certain things that would not sit right with certain people but he loves talking about it anyway because you know these comedians love attention and what's the better way to get attention than to try to get cancelled so they speak about cancel culture and like these like what Callan did with fucking um crazy rich asians Bert uses the movie apocalypto as a basis for his argument about cancer culture. I swear to God, the movie that Mel Gibson directed, yeah, one a great movie, one of the best movies of all time, maybe I'd go down and saying, um, he uses that as a reference of cancer culture because of how the Mayans were treated in that movie. Like, honestly, very, very strange. But just listen to Burt Kreischer talking about cancer culture and shit with, um, what's his face, with Tom. Like, it's yeah. never going to happen to us. Yeah. But then the Incas used to take the Aztecs up to the top. The Aztecs? And, or, yeah, yeah. The, the Aztecs used to take the Incas up to the top when they conquered the Incas. Have you ever seen a uh, fucking, what's the uh, the Mel Gibson movie? Yeah, uh, Apocalypto. Apocalypto. Yeah. They, they, when they capture them as slaves, they would then do human sacrifices <laughs> and people would all come and watch. And but, like, but those those are totally separate. Uh, like the Aztecs are up in Mexico and the, the Incas are down in South America. Yeah, but they caught, in, in, in the Apocalypto. In the they, movie? In the movie, they caught, they went in invaded grabbed the slaves brought them back okay <clears throat> and then did human sacrifices and that i thought was like a form of cancel culture of like people celebrating people falling like people going like <laughs> okay because that's what hang on, hang uh, on. I'm with you. All here's right. my thought cancel culture in its essence isn't i don't think people really give a fuck about the issue at hand i think what they care about is <laughs> it's not them they go oh fuck did you yeah. hear about that's yeah. what they they celebrate that it's not them well there's this other thing that's happening also let's just put this let's just put this out there um apocalypto was a movie a very good movie but it was a fucking movie it's made up and if i'm remembering this correctly none of it was historically correct apart from the dialect they use in the fucking movie and the location of where it's filmed in and that was really amazing right similar to fucking um um passion of christ the fact that when they used like they used a they used the language that was used at the time. I think it's, it makes the movie just that more rich, just that more powerful. It kind of, and obviously using people that actually look like they're from those countries instead of having fucking Bradley Cooper play one of these people, right? It's fucking amazing. But if I'm also remembering correctly, it's like that whole sacrifice thing, if I'm remembering correctly, is more like of an Aztec thing. And there's loads of reasons behind it. It's not about council culture. It's not because somebody in the fucking village or the township um, <laughs> told a shitty joke in the tent and then they take them up <laughs> to the top of their things and kind of gut them and pull out their hearts and shit. That's not because of some joke they told around a campfire. It's not. It's usually... Um, something that is a sacrifice to kind of bring good fortune and shit <laughs> whatever it may be and if I'm remembering it correctly it's an Aztec thing not a Mayan thing the movie Apocalypto kind of me meshes all these kind of you know cultures together and to tell the story right it's just it's just to tell a particular story and it's not basically historically correct right can we just say that out loud we all know this right it's a fucking movie <laughs> it's not real <laughs> and even if it was real Taking out someone's heart as part of a sacrifice is not equivalent to a comedian getting cancelled because they raped somebody allegedly or because they told a terrible offensive joke to a particular group of people and it came back to bite them in the ass. That's not the same thing, right? Um, I don't think Brad Williams can sit there and complain that he got cancelled for a brief time because he told a story where he had basically raped somebody, right? He can't call that a modern version of Aztecs when they would take out the hearts of people <laughs> as a sacrifice to the rain gods because of something bad they said as a cancelled thing. Like, that comment might be one of the most insane things I've heard on a podcast in my entire life. But again, it comes from Bert. It took him, what, six years to graduate or maybe more to graduate fucking college or high school, wherever he was in. He's not the smartest guy in the world. Great comic. 
good at fucking marketing and shit, world class at it. But when it comes to being smart and actually knowing what he's saying, that's not his forte. But Jesus Christ, what an incredible clip. Let's just continue and then I'll, con- <laughs> and then I'll play something else. When somebody gets in trouble for something, you're going, that's not me. And you're also, part of your brain is like running through the bad things you've said and done yeah. and gone like, <sighs> like, what would that be like? If that were, if, if I were in this position. Oh right? yeah. And yeah. so, and so I, I was, I'm trying to piece this together. Uh, and so I'm thinking about the Aztecs and the Incas or whatever that was that yeah. those human sacrifices. Then I thought started, and then I transitioned into, uh, hangings, public hangings, the witch trials, yeah. Salem witch trials is cancel culture really is. It's because they're so desperate to be victims, man. They fucking love being a fucking victim. Look at his eyes. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. You're just like. Let's not focus on what our problems are. Let's focus yeah. on that guy and then let's kill him. And then and then we don't have problems. We didn't do anything wrong. <clears throat> and then I went to the Reign of Terror. The Reign of Terror was in France in like the 1700s, 1600s. And it's done by this guy. Will you look up his name? I think it's Robert Maximilian. And he started it. He started the Reign of Terror and was like, we need to kill King fucking Louis or whatever, who was married to Marie Antoinette. Mm-hmm. And so they fucking killed, uh, type, type in Reign of Terror, R. E I G N. Maximilian Robespierre, my bad. Came and- to dominate the Committee of Public Safety during the Reign of Terror. The Reign of Terror took place between September 5th, 1793, and July 27th, 1794. During the Terror, the Committee exercised virtual dictor- dictatorial control over the French government. And so, so this is all the connective tissue. So I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, uh, do you remember the, 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 the Red Scare? With uh, in the fifties, where they were calling people communists in L- in in Hollywood. Yes, I was thinking about that, right? And so then I went to this guy. Public shaming is a public shaming yeah. is what is what cancer culture really is. It's public shaming, yeah. And people celebrate it and they rejoice in it. It makes them feel better about themselves. And in France, it took place for those years, and it only ended when they killed Rob's Pierre Maximilian. Then they, then they were like, everyone's like, dude, this fucking cancel culture is out of control. He's killed 17,000 people. We need to fucking stop this. This guy's a fucking lunatic. We're not all bad people. <laughs> yeah. We're not all. So what they did is they I fucking like killed this him. Guy. <laughs> they killed him. They brought him in. He tried to shoot himself in the fucking head to kill himself because he's like, they're coming after me. Shot his jaw off. And then they drove him through town and everyone's like, fuck you. And then took him guillotine. And I was like, so then that's how you end. And by the way, same thing happened with the Red Scare. It wasn't until they killed, <laughs> until they got McCarthy, they were like, fuck you, and made a fool out of him and canceled him, that that ans- ended. So I go, that's how you end cancel culture. You got to cancel the first person that started cancel culture. Anyway, you know what you heard. It's fucking horrendous, right? Um, imagine here, imagine listening to a history program that Bert, imagine listening to a Bert history program, a, hi- a Bert history podcast. Imagine. He tries to somehow, in a rambly, drunk way, explain all these historical, all these historical moments during history. Like, just imagine listening to that daily. Forget hardcore history. Listen to Bert try to <laughs> try to explain some of the critical moments in history. Can you imagine? Anyway, talking about cancel culture, right? I think the only people who have a right to complain and have a real reason to really kind of um, talk about the talk about treating cancel culture with some sort of level of caution are regular civilians like you and I. Regular people like you and I, as comedians like to call them, are the ones that usually get burnt the most by cancel culture. And why do I say that? One of the famous stories of cancel culture that we all kind of know and love um, that was written about in the book by uh, John Ronson which I forgot the name of it, um, but he's, he wrote a book, John, John Ronson, where he talks about that lady who made that racy tweet about, oh, I'm, I'm just getting on the plane on the way to Africa. Hopefully I don't get AIDS. And then when she lands in wherever she landed in Africa, um, by the time, you know, the journey of the plane to landing, her tweet went viral. She gets fired from her job and she essentially got quote unquote cancelled, like, you know, because of this kind of joke that she made on her own, you know, Twitter account that didn't have many people following it, but somehow it just went viral and it caught the attention of everybody. People like that should have a reason to be, you know, angry and annoyed at cancel culture because you said a joke, it wasn't that funny, fair enough, but, but it was just a joke and you're a regular person, now your whole life has been ruined. But I think with these people, 
for the majority of these people, especially these comedian guys, especially ones that have been cancelled from very egregious things, they don't really have a leg to stand on. Like, you're not getting cancelled really for saying racy jokes, most of these guys. Most of these guys are getting cancelled for things that you and I will be put in prison for. A good example is Brad Williams. The Brad Williams story I keep bringing up all the time because it's fucking insane. He brought up the story on a podcast without provocation where he basically admitted that he um raped somebody <laughs> right in their room because i think the story goes there i think do i think it's with carlos mencia i think they're on tour somewhere a girl comes back to the room um in the hopes of sleeping with carlos mencia or somebody else famous the lights are off and then she's she's told the guy's gonna come up but then it's not the guy that comes up it's brad williams and then he creeps through the dark of the room doesn't tell the girl who he is fucks her and then leaves which is essentially rape, right? And he admits to this fucking story in the pod, which is fucking crazy. And he kind of gets cancelled for a brief period. Can you really complain that people hear that story and think, hey, get this fucking guy out of here. Regular people that don't live your lifestyle, that just live in a regular normal life, law-abiding citizens would hear that story and think, hey, that's kind of gross. You deserve to get the fuck out of here. Now, again, the beauty about these guys' careers is that they essentially write their own checks, they're kind of independent comedians in some respects. So if you do get cancelled, the only thing you get cancelled from if you're a really famous comedian is that you don't basically get invited, you know, to Hollywood events. You're kind of out of Hollywood now. You get cancelled from the industry. But in terms of comedy, you're fine. We've already seen it with Chris D'Elia. Chris D'Elia basically got a whole documentary out there basically calling him a pedo, but he's still able to book shows in comedy clubs. Comedy clubs aren't, you know, don't have a moral stance or um you know they're not fucking telling him he can't play there his fans still like him brian callum's back on podcast again after getting accused of rape so essentially it's shown proof that these comedians who complain about cancel culture for the most part the really popular ones the rich ones successful ones can get away with it even ones that aren't as rich and successful as brad you know like brad williams can usually weather the storm and come back to it because it's it's a career that you can basically you know cultivate your own fan base with and some fans won't actually give a shit about so to complain about cancel culture when you're a comedian is a little bit trite and a little bit annoying which is why i have to kind of respect louis ck he took his cancellation on the chin didn't really cry about it, didn't really do a big council culture tour about it, understood why some people, when they heard that story of him jacking off in front of those up and coming comedians and jacking off into a plant, why it would you know, not sit well with them. His stuff got taken from him. He built it back up again. And now he's essentially, you know, still doing what he did before, making tons of money, touring the world, doing his comedy. It is what it is. But for some reason, these guys take it as like a, I don't know. It's as if they like they think they're too big to be cancelled. They desperately want to get cancelled, but then when they get cancelled for a legit crime that would land most people in prison, they're always surprised and they don't understand why. <laughs> it's like it's insane because a regular person, I keep saying this, a regular person could not go without working for one year while you're waiting to for him to die down, which what Chris Lee and Brian Callen did. That is proof enough that if you're privileged and you're rich and you're somewhat successful in your field, you can weather any counterculture storm. It's not that deep. But these guys clearly conflate all those things and they just view it all as maybe as a as a, as a sign that people are thinking they're bad people or something. I don't really know what it is, but whatever it is, I find it infuriating. I find it annoying because for the most part, most of these guys don't say anything worthwhile. The jokes are mediocre. So if regular people like you and I hear them and we're like, hey, let's get this fucking guy out of here. It's not really going to do anything. It's going to be a week of them getting, you know, chased around on social media and getting called out of their name and being pestered and shit. But for the most part, it all dies down. What comedian really can we think about that is actually got legitimately cancelled? And some of them have done some very egregious, you know, awful things what there's not none i can't think of one that's actually being cancelled they all come back so why are you complaining <laughs> you get a bit of you get a bit of variety you know you get a bit of free marketing out there your name trends and you come back and it's all it's all all, all is forgiven anyway maybe some of you won't go back onto rogan maybe some of you won't go on certain shows and shit but it's not really that deep really i don't think so like honestly really and truly it really is not that deep and we've got so many examples of it but again i could be wrong uh what are you guys saying in the chat <clears throat> most rapists um roam free az exactly uche um mm says and that's why they have their baby mamas sign ndas they're gross exactly mm exactly 
Um, Z says true. I've heard horror stories. I walked among there. Brandon says they use the excuse that all different animals rape in the wild. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I hate that you said that, Brandon, but you're so true. Um, as he says, wouldn't even need a guillotine for Brad, just a pair of scissors. <laughs> Fucking, you're going to hell. AZ, you're making it seem like regular dudes don't get away with rape all the time. No, 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 sorry. I'm I, I'm sure. Regular people do get away with rape. I think I'm just saying more so in a sense of like your job. Like they get to do their job again. A regular person, like imagine if you was a CEO of a big petroleum company and you got accused of rape. You you now have to be the manager of a grocery store. You don't get to go back to petroleum company jobs again. That prestige and those kind of jobs opportunities, they go. You shouldn't have one, but it goes. Do you know what I mean? I guess as a comedian, you kind of it removes you from certain rooms and certain places, but you still get to do your job again. You still get to do a podcast, you still get to go on tour and do shows. So it's not yeah, I mean it's not the same as regular people. We obviously still get away with it, but your big illustrious job goes you lose your family that's what i mean and also getting away with it like you know what i mean you get divorced you lose your family lose custody of your fucking kids like everything fucking goes for you even if you're not found guilty just the shame alone of being put through that fucking trial or that have that scrutiny will be enough to end you but these guys it's as if like what, what, what think about it what's the last partner or wife of a comedian that got cancelled for something egregious has left them they don't leave either. Do you know what I mean? Like nothing actually seems, seems to happen. Maybe a couple of their friends say something a bit um, spicy about them on a pod, but everything remains the same. The pod is there. The cars are there. The holidays are there. <laughs> the kids are there. The instant, like nothing moves. Chris Lee has still got his verified tick. <laughs> everything stays. <laughs> you don't lose anything. You just have to sit down for like a year. That's it. Um, uh, the, what well, people saying yeah Shay, Shane already has a funny drunk history podcast we don't need an annoying one exactly uh, berserker yanks is a cancelled term uh, the way Tom and Bert dress really bothers me <laughs> as, as he's really there's nothing there what bothers you about this I, I just assumed most American guys dress like this right with the new era and the t-shirt there's not really wearing anything that crazy you know what is it about their dress sense that bothers you about them? I want to know this because they don't redress really that crazy. I don't think so. T-shirts, regular, regular middle-aged dad shit, no? Or no? Or is that embarrassing? I don't think they dress that crazy, to be fair. It's just kind of middle-aged white guy shit. Especially Americans. They, you, you guys love hats, innit? Huh? Big hat. Huh? The beard. Liquid death here down there, yeah? Nice. Um... I can't wait until a study comes out that says liquid death is worse than actual water. I can't wait. Like liquid death is like equivalent to drinking like soapy water or some shit because the way these guys guzzle this shit down is hilarious. Obviously I know it's a sponsor, but I can't wait until somebody does a fucking YouTube documentary about liquid death and finds out the factories that they fucking make them in use fucking the corpses of fucking dead soldiers from fucking Ukraine to make the fucking, I don't know, they make the cans. They're going, something's going to happen. And it's going to be funny to see how these guys react to it because they cut them a hell of a check because they're always fucking drinking this shit. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, 